In this session, we're going to be looking at the OAuth 2.0 flow plus scopes, right? So this is like part two on our whole topic around OAuth uh, uh, flows, right? So really the main thing here is, here is, is that if we just do a quick recap from my previous video, you know, we, we kind of like looked at the main components here. Where like, for example, we, all, we looked at the resource server, we looked at the authorization uh, server, we looked at the authorization grants, we looked at access tokens. Um, so we kind of like covered the main topics here in terms of the components of the OAuth 2.0 flow, right? And we also talked about how it basically ultimate goal is to access that access token. But if you remember with the access token here, in the previous video, the access token kind of like blindly gave us access to kind of like everything here. And that's not a good thing, right? So when we're accessing, when we're basically saying we want access to something on the resource server at the bottom right hand side, you know, we don't want an access token that kind of gives us everything, right? So if you look in terms of the actual kind of like flow here, really it's the same thing. But this time when we click on the login page on our LinkedIn website, and we're actually going to go over to the authorization server, what we're going to do in there, in addition to say what kind of response we want, the code, right? In this instance, we want an access code uh, uh, ultimately back, right? What we're really saying here, in addition to that, is we're also going to specify the scope, right? And scopes are important because what happens is there's a standard list of scopes that authorization service recognizes. And basically these scopes helps to narrow the permissions on what you're actually trying to do here. Again, going back to that authorization, right? We want to authorize it, but we want to be more specific and granular that we're doing. So again, in the login, what we're doing before, when we log in here, we get redirected to the authorization server. The authorization server comes back, kind of gives us the authorization the authorization grant, so nothing changes there. And then what we basically do is take the authorization grant, go to the authorization server. Um, so the same thing kind of goes over here. And then basically we're getting back our access token. And this time, after the access token, when we actually go to that resource server, what's actually essentially happening here is that we are now specifying exactly what we want to do here. So that, that scope, is specified here and what we're permitted allowed to access on that resource uh, server. So remember I said contact.google.com, there may be a specific aspect of that limited, again, just kind of like reducing the, the, the I guess is essentially the scope of what you're trying to give access to somebody, right? And another key thing to kind of like remember here is the authorization server here understands these scopes, right? So these scopes that are coming in they actually understands that. And actually what actually happens is that there is a whole standardized list of these uh, scopes available on the server here. So he recognizes when that incoming connection is happening. Thank you.